everyone. So hello to all of my fellow standers, to all my friends, you people of God. I hope that you are all having a good and blessed day. Thank you very much for sharing with me your time. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and thank you for liking my videos. For those who have not yet subscribed, I encourage you, click on that subscribe button so that we can always be together every time I come on. So today, I am hoping and I am praying that I am able to encourage you all through the experiences that I have gone through during this stand. But let me pose a question, a very important one. Have you ever heard that God performed the first marriage? You know, my dear friends, I ask you this because recently I sat down to write out scriptures to pray over my marriage. I was journaling. Then I read Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 24, about how God placed Adam in a deep sleep. And while Adam was sleeping, God created a help meet for him and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman and he brought her to the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 24. My dear friends, how many of us have read that portion of scripture so many times that we probably know it by heart? The Lord revealed to me something so profound through this that it really set me free from a lie that the enemy had me believing for far too long. You see, when God created woman for man, he literally joined them together as one flesh. So when the scripture says what he joined together, that is exactly what it means. It's literal. It's not something that we just say, oh, we didn't see it or anything. God literally joined the first man and the first woman. So God did perform the very first marriage and everyone after that because He joined us together with our spouse. It cannot be torn apart, my dear friends. No, never. Only death, only death is the reason for you to be separated from your husband or for you to be free of this joining of God because my dear friends you are a part of your spouse woman is a part of man so you cannot be separated by man because it was God who joined you together with your spouse when you got married this is the part that really, really set me free. The enemy had put in my mind that I shouldn't pray for my marriage because it was selfish of me to do so. I shouldn't want my marriage or want my husband home the way that I do. I should let go and set my husband free for him to be happy. That is one of the biggest lies that the 
enemy for so long has been telling me. If you love someone, set them free. I'm sure you've heard that, right? And you know what, my dear friends? For a long time, I believed it. I believed that lie. But the revelation that God gave me through this shows that it is His heart to restore my marriage and to bring my beloved home. Because it was God who joined my husband and me together. You know what, my dear friend? If He joined us together in the first place, wouldn't it be in His heart to restore us and our marriage? Wouldn't it be in His will? So I am very confident, my dear friends, that if you are praying for your covenant marriage, you are praying in alignment with God's will because it is His heart to reconcile us back to our spouse. Remember, my dear friends, you were created by God for your husband, just as I was. And he joined us together in a covenant marriage and saw that it was good. My dear friends, he saw that your marriage was good. You know, one of the first verses that God sent me or one of the first scriptures that God really showed me. Actually, this is the very first scripture or verse that He sent me. So I really um, claim this to be my Rima word from God. This is from Mark chapter 10, verses 6 to 9. But from the beginning, God created male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his parents, his father and his mother, and be wedded to his wife. And the husband and wife will be joined as one flesh. And after that, they no longer exist as two, but one flesh. So, my dear friends, there you have it. What God has joined together, no one has the right to ever, ever separate. I looked up this passage and the footnote says about verse 9 that Jesus gave them God's view and used the creation of man and woman in the garden as the standard. This was what Jesus declared when he was asked about divorce. He gave them God's view on marriage. And my dear friends, if we are in agreement with God, shouldn't that be our view as well? You know, my dear friends, here Jesus went back to what is God's instructions. He goes back to where it all started. This is the part I think that, you know, will speak to someone, possibly, hopefully, many of you. Because definitely it did speak to me. This passage is very important to me. Your marriage is broken. That is all. How can I say that when I don't even know your situation, right? Well, my dear friends, this is it. If you break an arm, would you cut it off and hope that a new one would grow back? No. That is very, very silly to think that you can even, even do that. Instead, go to the doctor and have it set in a cast to heal. But, my dear friends, if you become very impatient, if it becomes very uncomfortable for you and you remove it or have it removed sooner than it should be, it could possibly break again. Or 
you could even create a greater damage, right? So my dear friends, that hand must be given time to heal. And in the case of a broken marriage, which is exactly the same, God needs to be the one to do the mending if you want it to heal properly. Remember, my dear friends, we are one flesh with our spouse. You cannot cut it off just because it is broken. You wouldn't cut off your arm. And you know, my dear friends, you know, you wouldn't even think about cutting your arm. So why are we so quick to think of cutting off our own spouse when we go through a season of brokenness in our marriage? We are one flesh with our spouse. I cannot reiterate this enough. And I encourage you all, let God do the mending and fix what is broken. And then it can be better than me. Allow these scriptures to really settle in your spirit, my friend. Let it really, really give you peace and carve these words of God in your heart. Psalm 147 verses 3 through 5 encourages us. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by their names. Great is our majestic and mighty Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is inexhaustible, infinite, boundless. So, my dear friends, yes, He heals the wounds of every shattered heart. Remember, God is very close to the brokenhearted. There is absolutely nothing, nothing that He cannot do. What has been joined together as one flesh is still one flesh. It is just broken. And God is able and very much willing to fix it. I ask you this. Are you willing to let him do it his way? So my dear friends, hope you ponder on today's encouragement. I hope that this encourages you as it did me. When the Lord put it in my spirit, it really spoke volumes to me. Let him do the work. He is able to make your marriage better. Believe me, my friends. He will not only make it better, but he will make it so much more than what it was before. Because that is how faithful and generous our God is. So again, thank you very much for your time. And I pray that this blesses you. God bless you all and have a good and blessed day. Bye-bye.